Hi there and thank you for taking a look at my channel. In this video we are going to look at the properties of angles and cover some of the basic angle laws. I will cover further laws in a second video but I hope you find this one useful. If you do, please do subscribe. Sadly, there's an inescapable truth when we're working with angles in geometry in that we have to learn lots of names and rules. There are no shortcuts and no easy way around, so we're going to start with learning some of the names of the angles. The top left angle here is in fact any angle that is less than 90 degrees, and this we call an acute angle. Below it, we have the classic 90 degree angle, which is the right angle. You'll notice that it has a square in the corner. All the others are part circles. And this is a good guide. If you see an exam question which looks slightly out of line, if it has a square, it is a right angle. Below that, we're going slightly larger again. Now, this angle has two rules. First of all, it is larger than 90 degrees, so bigger than a right angle, but it is smaller than 180 degrees. This we call an obtuse angle. In the top right hand corner, this is quite simply a straight line. And in fact, it measures 180 degrees. If we are looking at an angle that is larger than 180, in other words, an angle that kind of bends back on itself here, we call this a reflex angle. It is larger than 180, but not a whole circle, because a whole circle is the one on the bottom right here. It is all the way round the angle. If you like, I could draw another circle there. And it is, of course, 360 degrees. It is a whole turn. Before we move on to any further geometry, it is a good idea to learn the names of all these six angles. If we want to measure an angle, let's say the angle here, it's larger than 90, less than 180, therefore it's an obtuse angle, we are going to need a protractor. And in order to measure it, the first thing we need to do is move the protractor so the little cross line in the center just there is in the center of the angle. We then turn it, I'm almost exactly right there, so that the zero line is along one side of the angle, and then we measure around the outside, and in this case, we are looking at 115 degrees. Looking at the protractor more closely, you can see there's another scale running from zero on the other side here which then runs anti-clockwise. This is so you can measure angles either in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The interesting one would be if you are trying to measure a reflex angle. Remember, this is the one that folds back on itself. So a reflex angle could be something like this, where the angle that you are asked to measure is this one here. There are two solutions to this. Firstly, you could mark another line by extending the first line further down like this. In doing so, what you are creating is first of all an angle here, which is a straight line. So you know that to be 180 already. You can then use your protractor to measure this part here and add it to the 180. That way you've measured all around the angle. The second option with an angle like this is rather than extending the line, in fact, what you can do is measure this angle and take it away from 360. We know 360 is all the way around. If we measure a part of it, take it away, it leaves the rest. Either way, we'll give you a correct reading. The next thing to be aware of is how we label or name an angle within a diagram such as the one we have here. For instance, if I want somebody to measure this particular angle here, then we name it by using three points. 
if you look at this angle, it starts at D here, the line moves to A and then moves back out to B. So our angle is from here to here and out to this corner here. For that reason, we would call this angle D A B. So from D to A to B. You might also see this written with a little diagram such as this, which means angle, and then D A B written after it, angle D A B. Of course, you can also call it B A D. Same angle, you are looking at the central letter being the corner where the angle is, and the outside two letters being the directions of the two sides. So, for example, if we are looking to measure another angle on this diagram, let's have a look at the angle down the bottom here. This would be angle D C B. Starts at D, moves to C, and back out to B. You can create further angles from a diagram like this. For instance, if I were to draw a line across the centre here, I then have an angle in this corner, for instance, here. Now this would be angle D, B, C. Starts at D, goes to B, down to C. This you will find a quite common way of naming an angle in a test or exam question. Let's have a look at a few more rules that apply to geometry that are very, very useful when it comes to handling exam questions. The first of all is the rule about angles inside a triangle. Every triangle has three corners. And quite simply, if we add A plus B plus C, they add up to 180 degrees. Angles inside any triangle total 180. Similarly, if we have a quadrilateral, that's any four-sided shape, so a square, rectangle, parallelogram, and so on, we have four angles here, and if we add those up, so E plus F plus G plus H, they always add up to 360 degrees. You'll recall earlier that I said that we have an angle on a straight line such as this one and we know this to be 180 degrees. Well if you follow on from this, if I break this down into a number of different angles such as this, so I now have maybe angle X, Y, Z and Q. If I add those angles up, they will add up to 180. They total half a circle. And the way we describe this is to say that angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees. Laws such as this, and we will come across some more, are very useful because in an exam question, you can answer the question simply by quoting the law. You don't have to prove that, you just have to state that you are aware of it. And this next law follows on exactly from the last one in that these angles are all radiating from a point in the centre, angle A, B, C, D, E. Therefore, they are angles around a point. They are totalling a full circle. Therefore, they add up in total to three 360 degrees. Angles around a point equal 360 degrees. Another law which you can quote in a test or exam. Now this rule I want to mention because it appears so often and it is about the isosceles triangle. So the triangle's isosceles we know it is because these two lines here indicate that these two sides are the same length. The rule, as far as angles are concerned, is that if two sides are the same length, then these two angles are also equal. Now, knowing that angles inside the triangle add up to 180, this can help us solve many problems. For instance, if I were to say that this angle here was 50, we can work out the other two angles. They have to total 180. Therefore, we have 180 minus the top angle, 50, 
equals 130. So the two bottom angles have to add up to 130. As they are equal, it is therefore simply 130 divided equally by 2. So therefore, x equals 65 degrees. Both of the bottom angles are 65. I am going to continue with more angle laws in a second video, but to complete this one I just want to give you an example of the type of question you might be asked to solve using the rules that we've looked at so far. Here we have a straight line and on it we have a triangle. We're given an angle which is on the outside of the triangle and the question here is to find the angle x. What the examiners are doing here is combining different rules and expecting you to understand which rules to apply to find the answer. We're going to answer this by quoting rules. So first of all we have an angle of 100 degrees. We need to work our way inside the triangle. The first clue we have is that these two lines tell us it's an isosceles triangle. Therefore this angle here and this angle here are the same. The first rule in order to find out the angle and I'm going to call it Y is the rule that tells us that angles on a straight line and this is what you would put in your question angles on a straight line equal 180. Therefore angle Y must be 80 degrees because it's on a straight line with the other angle measuring 100. Let's have a look now at angle Z. Well, because this is an isosceles triangle, it means that Y and Z are equal. So Z is also 80 degrees. Now, we have two angles inside a triangle. We have 80 degrees at this angle and 80 degrees here. We know, and here's another rule, angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. These two angles add up to 160. Therefore, if we have 180 minus 160, that leaves us 20 degrees. That must be the angle of X for the three angles to add up to 180. So we've used three rules. We've used the rule of angles on a straight line. We've used the rule about angles on the base of an isosceles triangle. And we've used the rules that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And this is quite often how you would solve a geometry question. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I will cover further angle laws and parallel lines in a second video and we will also take a look at some different types of exam questions that you might encounter. Please hit the subscribe button if you found this useful and hopefully I will see you again. Thank you.